The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Derek and in this video I want to take my 8 inch telescope and I want to create a computerized device that allow me to input a particular celestial body, be it a planet, a star, or some other constellation. And I want to be able to tell it what to look at and have it automatically go there and automatically track it across the sky. Now you might say, why are you doing this? There are already devices out there that allow you to accomplish exactly that task. And the reason is number one, they're expensive. And I have things around the office that I could accomplish this with. The reason number two is somehow my daughter's school found out that I'm kind of a nerd and I have a telescope. So they've asked me to go to STEM night and set up my telescope in the back of the school and the kids can interact with it. Now, since I don't have a tripod or any means to control it, that's a bit of a problem. So that's kind of uh, the impetus for this video. So the idea is to take a Raspberry Pi and create a kind of a uh, desktop computer slash uh, old school looking arcade, right? With a couple of buttons and a joystick that allow them to swipe through the screen through different planets, select which one they want, flip a switch, it'll automatically track to it. And then once it gets to the planet, I'll give them a little bit of a window so they can move the joystick around and kind of explore the planet a little bit. So hopefully this sparks the kids' interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and who doesn't love playing around with a telescope? So we have a lot of stuff to integrate here and some code to write, so let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So let's talk enclosures real quick, because this is probably one of my favorite parts of completing a project or integrating everything together is putting the electronics into the enclosure. Now you can purchase enclosures online, but you're kind of limited to what's on the shelf, right? So what I like to do sometimes is make my own enclosures. So I'll mock it up in cardboard first using hot glue. And uh, then I can kind of see what materials I'm gonna need if I'm gonna use wooden panels for the sides and metal for the face. So I'll take a sheet of like eighth inch uh, aluminum, I'll score it on the table saw and then I'll just bend it. It makes a nice sharp bend. And if I'm left with an open spot, I'll use um, Bondo, which is uh, the stuff you use for um, automotive for filling cracks and holes and dents and stuff like that um, And just sand it after I'm done then I'll paint it. So I, I mocked this up um, Which is just going to house the monitor and the controls for the front panel And the great thing about that is you can actually install the switches and buttons and I've installed the joystick just to see If uh, that's where I want to place them Then you can disassemble this thing and actually trace it out on the metal and cut the metal to this size so then you have an accurate representation of what you initially prototyped and you end up with this. All right, so here's the finished product. I've actually got wooden panels on the sides, like I said, and a metal panel for the front. And I've got these screws that actually hold in a plexiglass sheet. And that's gonna protect it from the kids, you know, banging on it and whatever. But I really wanted to make this look like uh, some kind of an arcadey looking thing because I want the kids to just come up and be like, oh, I wanna press all those buttons and play with the joystick. What does it do? We've got a Raspberry Pi, we're gonna have a camera, we have a joystick interface, we have a monitor. We have a lot of things plugged into the Raspberry Pi. We have to control the turret. We have to get data from the digital compass or the IMU, but there is quite a bit of software involved. So let's take a look at the electronics real quick and then we'll look at the software a little bit more in detail. So here's the backside of our enclosure. I'm using every single port here. We've got one going to the uh, turret and then we have this USB connector which goes to the inertial measurement unit. We have another one that goes to our joystick controller here. That's just the USB interface, I'll zoom in in a sec. And then we have a USB hub, so during development I can connect my mouse and keyboard. And of course we have a connection to our camera which is specially designed to fit into our telescope. So here's a little bit of a closer view. Raspberry Pi 3 is mounted here. Uh, this is the USB uh, to joystick interface. Um, I got this off of eBay and it comes with like nine different buttons and it uses the Linux joystick module to talk to it. Uh, so you just call that in your code and you can use it. I'll show you that in a little bit. And of course you can't just power off the Raspberry Pi because it could corrupt the SD card. So this switch actually turns the Raspberry Pi off, which is always a useful feature. So this is the rear underside of the control panel. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. 
You can see um, the automotive filler here that I've used to kind of try and strengthen up the, uh, the cuts, the scores that I made on the table saw. Here is the uh, joystick. Okay, you can see it's just a bunch of uh, switches in there. These are the two buttons for selecting our planets, swiping back and forth. And these are my two toggle switches to switch between camera and live mode and tracking. I've got um, some pull-up resistors here that go over to our USB to joystick interface card here. Now we're going to make our observations of the sky from planet Earth. The position of a particular object in space can be represented in numerous ways. A widely used method is the equatorial coordinate system. This representation uses the center of the Earth as our observation point, and a much larger celestial sphere which encompasses the Earth. We need to define two parameters to locate an object along the celestial sphere. The first is right ascension, which measures the angular distance of an object eastward along the celestial equator from the vernal equinox. That's a mouthful, but not so important as you'll see in a moment. The second parameter is the declination, which measures the angular distance of an object perpendicular to the equator, north being a positive value and south being a negative value. But we don't live at the center of the Earth, at least I don't. We'll be making our observations from here in sunny Orlando, Florida. Remember that the Earth is rotating and whatever we're observing moves along its own trajectory, so we'll need to continuously update the position of our telescope. So our telescope has the ability to tilt and rotate. In astronomy, this terminology translates to elevation and azimuth. Fortunately, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratories has a wonderful website called Horizons, which allows us to input our location and it will produce what is called ephemeris data, or position over time for a particular celestial body of interest. Now we can forego the process of converting equatorial coordinate system data and just grab the azimuthal and elevation data and stick it into a plain old text file that our software can parse. Our pan and tilt mechanism, which I'll from here on out refer to as the turret, needs to know where the object in the sky is, but we need the angles, we need the Euler angles. So that would be our uh, elevation and our azimuth. Okay, so that's why we pulled data from uh, JPL. Now we need to mount a sensor to the telescope so that we know where the telescope is relative to that object in the sky. And then from our software, we can control the motors and tell it to move left, right, or up and down. Uh, so I originally was using this digital compass. Now, unfortunately, this thing just stopped working after I'd finished writing all of my software and everything was working beautifully. It just stopped after about a day working on this and trying to get it working again. Um, I just couldn't, so I gave up. Instead, we're using a more modern IMU or inertial measurement unit. Um, and this one uses a Bosch sensor. So it also detects pitch, roll, yaw, and needs to be calibrated. So that's a little bit more of a difficult process with this particular sensor. I can't just rotate the turret and tilt it. Um, so it doesn't really lend itself to our application. I, every time I power this up, I'm gonna have to uh, calibrate it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and mounted the telescope to the turret just using some zip ties um, as a temporary solution. And I wanted to show you the electronics a little more in detail before we go ahead and uh, try to read the IMU on the computer. So I'll zoom in a little bit more in a second, but we have the IMU mounted here. Uh, we have an Arduino that talks to that over I squared C. And then of course we have our RS-232 level shifter that goes to our mil spec connector over here. Now, like I said before, the calibration process is a little silly with this IMU because I can't store the values in memory. Um, I have to, every time I power cycle this, I have to take it off and I have to do this. I have to rotate it 45 degrees. Then I have to rotate it 45 degrees. And then I turn it a little bit like this, which I could do by actually moving the turret, uh, but I, I can't tilt it this direction. I could tilt it this way, but it doesn't seem to calibrate it. And the calib calibration procedures a little bit wonky and really not well described on the website so I don't know every time I have to do this which seems kind of silly actually while I have it off I'll try to zoom in here and show you so here's the IMU I squared C lines go over to the Raspberry Pi to these GPIO pins right here um, I've got power coming through this connector which is 5 volts of course our Arduino here 
that goes uh, over to our mil spec connector. An RS-232 signal goes through the bulkhead and down through the arm of the turret and then through this slip ring that's inside the neck here and through this connector then goes through to our controller. Hey, how would you like to get free stuff like this? The Element 14 Road Test Program sends you free products in exchange for detailed reviews posted to the community. Head over to element14.com to see past reviews and apply to be a road tester today. So this project is uh, kind of based around uh, OpenCV, which is an open source computer vision library. What it allows you to do is do object tracking, classification, uh, you can do deep uh, learning networks with it. Uh, but I'm using just the basic functionality of connecting uh, a webcam, which is essentially what our, our telescope camera is. And it allows you to do that very easily. And we can also load images. Um, I'm not using the advanced features, it's just a nice easy way to um, do this on a Raspberry Pi, although installing it on a Raspberry Pi is rather difficult. So there is a substantial amount of code, and I'm not going to go through it all because there is quite a bit of it, but I will cover some of the things that are core concepts of this project and some things like using the joystick that you might find useful in your own projects. So let's go ahead and take a look. Inside of my project folder, I have these text files. Now, when I show the planet, uh, when the system boots up, I want some text to overlay with interesting information for the kids uh, that they can read. You know, fourth planet from the sun covered with reddish dust. And it's an uh, in image uh, four of eight. So interesting stuff to overlay on the planets. Now, and if I go into this bodies folder, this is for celestial bodies, I have some different planets. Uh, nothing too interesting to see there. However, if we scroll down, or I guess across rather, um, I have some these EPH underscore planet name text files. Now this is the ephemeris data. This is the actual position of the planet in elevation and azimuth uh, for a particular time. I've downloaded from NASA JPL uh, the position of the planet minute by minute. So periodically my software is gonna run through this file and find a match for the date and time and the position and then I know uh, relative to my telescope's current position, how far I need to adjust my position in both azimuth and elevation. Now let's go ahead and look at the source code. So here we're using OpenCV2. We're pulling in joystick. We're pulling in my serial header file that allows me to open and close, read and write to the compass or the IMU and the turret. We're also using wiring Pi so that we can uh, monitor the toggle switches over GPIO with the Raspberry Pi. And I have some uh, defines here that are uh, related to the stepper motors. So that brings us to main. Uh, we've got a bunch of variables here that I'm not really gonna go over, but the basic idea is we set up the toggle switches with wiring pi, okay, as inputs with pull-up resistors. Then we use uh, OpenCV to open the webcam, and then we open the IMU uh, over our serial port, and we open the turret over a serial port. So I'm basically just pinging it and waiting for a certain response. Then I load all of the images with OpenCV to the screen for the user to see. I set up the joystick, which basically just opens a connection to it. And then I call uh, time, so I can uh, get my actual time value, and then I, I pull out the, the date and timestamp and try to match it to the ephemeris files. And then we do this continuous loop, okay? So inside of this loop, we read the toggle switches, we're constantly doing that. And for the camera to be at the proper frame rate, we have to call wait key. If we don't call wait key, then it just hangs. That's just standard OpenCV stuff. You always have to call wait key inside of this loop. Then we call read compass to get the current azimuth and elevation values that we're gonna use later. There's some other timer stuff here that's inconsequential. Um, then we call match ephemeris, which takes our current timestamp, looks through the ephemeris file and tries to find the timestamp, pulling out the position of that planet. Okay, so if we have valid data, non-zero basically, and our switch number two, okay, the right-hand toggle switch is flipped up, that means that we want to track the planet. If our error between our current position and the position of the planet is greater than five degrees, we make a quick move, so a compound move. We call move to target. We pass it the position of the planet as well as our current position and it tries to correct for the error. Uh, we wait for that response, and in the meantime, we're still reading our current value. If we don't do that, then things get kind of messed up. 
of course, found by trial and error. If we are less than five degrees, basically, we make these short movements, okay? I have certain windows set up to make large movements or little tiny movements. So this will constantly keep us on track with that planet as it traverses across the sky. After that, we process any joystick uh, events. If we're not enabling the camera, then we can use the left and right buttons to swipe through planets. That's basically what this is. If we have a joystick event, that allows us to tilt up and down or pan clockwise or counterclockwise. And this lets the user uh, move the uh, telescope around and kind of explore the planets. If the left toggle switch is enabled, it allows the camera to be shown. If it's not, then we destroy the camera window and hide it, basically. If the camera is enabled, then we go ahead and capture the frame and update it, and we resize it to fit the uh, poor resolution of my screen, 1280 by 1024. And that's basically it. This may be difficult to see, so I apologize for that in advance, but I can't do a screen capture on the Raspberry Pi. It takes up too much space. So let's execute the program. It's going to connect to the turret and it's going to connect to the IMU. Okay, it loads up all my images. Um, so now we can toggle to a particular planet and then once I flip this switch, it'll start tracking. Let's flip over to the command line. It's constantly updating the position. So I have my current azimuth, that's the uh, IMU and my actual planet, that's the actual position of Saturn up in the sky and it shows me my offset in azimuth, so I need to rotate negative 22 degrees to get to Saturn. So let's flip the switch and watch it go. Yes! It's working. Uh oh, oh there we go, it found it. Okay, it's pointed at Saturn. Let's go ahead and switch over to the moon. <laughs> I think I can remove my painter's tape now. That is so cool. Jupiter? Where's Jupiter? It's got to load the file. Finding Jupiter. Hmm. Mars? Where's Mars? Oh, it's a little jerky with the uh, elevation. Dude, that is so cool. Well, this project turned out to be awesome. It was a lot of fun and I learned a lot doing it. I incorporated a lot of different things. And at times it was challenging with the amount of software that I had to write and uh, some of the physics that I had to learn in order to make this video. Unfortunately, the weather didn't hold out. So it's been overcast for several days and I didn't get some of the shots that I wanted to get. The astronomy part of uh, STEM night was canceled, so the kids didn't get to play around with it. Uh, but they did invite me back, so I will demonstrate this for them out in the field, and maybe I'll catch some video for you. And since I didn't get some of the footage that I wanted, we're definitely going to come back and revisit this project after I make some modifications. So what I would have changed about this is uh, the firmware for the turret. The board inside didn't work, so I had to make my own board, write the firmware. There are some uh, fine adjustments that could be made. Namely, the tilt, as you saw, was kind of uh, jiggling up and down. Uh, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. The turret works, it tracks planets. Uh, it's a little bit off, so there'd be some corrections uh, that need to be made. And the controller itself was pretty awesome. It worked uh, flawlessly. There are, of course, some modifications that can always be made to improve things. I did get to look through the telescope myself, and I saw Jupiter, I saw Saturn, Venus, and one of the most amazing shots that I got, and the clearest, was the moon. Check this out. All right, well that pretty much wraps it up for today. 
If you have any cool astronomy projects that incorporate electronics, optics, and motors, then I would love to hear about it. Or if you can think of anything that would improve this project, let me know down in the comments and engage with us at the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. Thanks and have a good one.